There we go. We are live. It's not live, is it? It's recorded. Yeah. I just realised. Um, never mind. We're live at the moment, though. So does that count? I have no idea anymore. Um, we're done a mic. Hello, welcome. We're from Biases and Banter. That's our brand name. We haven't talked about that for a while. That it, we yeah. just say we're done a mic, not done a mic from Biases and Banter, but never mind. All the same, innit? Um, we're here to help you with your fitness business. We're here to give you the advice that other people aren't giving you, um, even though you need to hear it, um, because we're not scared about anything other than my mum. I'm scared of my mum. But other than that, I'm not scared of anyone. So when she full names you, that's when you know you're in trouble. Daniel. She says Daniel. Oh my God. God. And a middle name, surely. What's the middle name? <laughs> I can't yeah. remember. Uh, well, you just forgot. Middle name? Just, uh, I can't oh, out the She's yeah. never come around with no name, luckily. I think I, I, think I can remember. It's George, it I think, something like that, isn't well, it? Well, no, that's mine. Oh, that's is That's a normal one. <laughs> no. you know, like King George, you know. Um, George Best, you know, that yeah. type of thing. Sutherland. Yes, yeah. Sutherland. Uh, yeah. I think it's a royal name, I think they said. Is it? Yeah, that's what my dad said. It's some, it? some sort of royal. Is it? It's royal. No, it's more of a surname, though, isn't it? Sutherland. Royal, yeah, maybe. For yeah, your, maybe it's for a royal, your middle name. Maybe it's a royal surname. I can't remember. But yeah. anyway. Um, but um, yeah, there we go. Yeah, um, I'll do my usual thing. Just fucking subscribe, will you? Tell everyone about Tell it. Tell everyone, share it and yeah. stuff. Go, oh my God, I can't believe the amount of information that these boys are putting out. They're so refreshing. Down so to different earth. to everything. That's where... No, no Rolexes, no, no Lamborghinis. No Rolexes. You know, yet. You know. Um, we'll change as soon as we can afford one. You wait. We'll change. Yeah, that's it. Don't worry about um, it. But we need your subscriptions because we need to turn the ads on. See, I've not turned the ads on on this because we don't really have enough views yet. So tell everyone about it. And once that happens, we'll piss you off with the, with the ads. So. Yeah, <laughs> No, we won't. We'll never do that. We'll never put ads on, will we? Will we? Will it's we? not worth it. Do you know how many views you need to get to get any sort of money? Silly. I think it's like, I think someone posted it. I think Matt, the fitness posted it once. I think he got a million views on a video and it got him about 800 quid. Shut up. Something like that. Pointless having views on there. Yeah. You have to put out a lot. Yeah. It has to be a lot of stuff. And I think people have to then click on the ads. You know, if you skip them, I don't think it actually gives you much money. You have to actually watch them. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll get there one day, mate, don't you worry? A million views. No, Just keep sharing it. Just keep sharing it yeah. with all your, all your mates. Not one of them will share it. No. Other than you. you I'm, I'm worried because I, I feel like that people are saying, what they seem to be saying, on the, oh, I love YouTube videos, they're great, but no one's commenting saying that they love them. No one's yeah. putting in the comments or they're sharing it on their Instagram story saying, I'm just watching these two legends. You know, you know that means a lot, doesn't it? You know, you know as coaches, a little bit of a share of your content always always goes It'd on. It would really way. help us out. It would because we're getting no We're views. coming across a bit beggy now, so just, you know, please share it. Just, yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna easier after this one. This one, you what? Did you uh, <laughs> nothing? Didn't I've not done that before? Oh, not in the studio. <laughs> um, oh, that's over on the couch, isn't it? Um, what? Huh? Sorry, no. Um, so this one, we we spoke last week about um, about coaches going through this trend of ramping up expenses and bringing in um, sales teams, VAs, butlers, private chefs, people doing the training programming. Basically, just all useless stuff um, that they don't necessarily need at this moment in time. But we're going to talk about, in this video, how to expand your team without it sending your expenses through the roof. Shock horror. Mm. Where you can actually profit, profit from actually having a member of staff. Here we go. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Obviously, we've gone down the group coaching route where we have... Set up a program, um, and then our coaches kind of fulfill some of the coaching elements on that. And then from there, they then get one-to-one -one leads that, that come through the group coaching program because people, believe it or not, think it's great, and they love it, and they want to stay on for one-to-one -one. Um, because it's good service rather than just palmed off um, with a meal plan and shit like that, basically. So maybe we'll talk about that on another video. Um, so there's a good ways you can do it, or you can just bring on the coach directly. Um, and you can sort of say to them, look, you're on board, you're part of the team, part of the brand. Um, you can obviously give them clients that maybe you can't take on because you're too full. You can have different price points. Um, and that sort of stuff. But we'll talk about the problems maybe of doing that, some problems we encountered and why we believe maybe a sort of a, a group coaching thing is probably a really good way to get that person set up within your business potentially. It's a good ways of doing it, isn't there? Yeah, so when we first brought on our first employee, not employee, I, I, I don't necessarily... I don't necessarily like calling our, our coaches employees. I don't think because I don't. I don't think it is. No. They're, they're like coaches within our brand. Let's just say the first coach that we brought on within our brand to coach with us. We had a, a waiting list of about thirty, thirty-five or something like that mm. at the time. Me and Dan were full, and we expected her to come in um, and just take the ones on the on the waiting list under our brand. And we were just we were just naive. And looking back, you think, well, obviously, you know, they wanted to work with us. This person 
Swallows saying to purposes was a was a, a random at that moment in time. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. We just fucked up. Um, so we were in the position then where we were like, oh shit, we've got another coach, and now we actually need to make this kind of like worth both people's while. These, you know, this 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 waiting list ain't going anywhere, and that's where we kind of, I guess, started the balls roll the balls, hey. the ball rolling with um with the group coaching. The premise being that if you set up, for example, and this isn't for everybody because there's certain niches and demographics that this wouldn't be suited to. For example, if you're a bodybuilder no. um, that focuses in prep athletes, you doing a six-week group coaching, pointless. Um, so that this only works with certain demographics. For ours, it did work. Um, but we set up a group coaching where you're coached by the brand, not the coach. Then that way, that's an easy way to get the, your new coach or our new coach to coach within our brand and the client wouldn't really therefore be too worried about that because they've not signed up with a coach specifically, they've signed up with the brand and then they would get to know the coach within the setting of a group coaching and then that's how we can get our coach's face seen by these these leads and then it can build from there. So group coaching can work really well because it, it then also gives that, that new coach coach uh, clients to go and coach you can then make sure that uh, values are aligned coaching principles are aligned and it can be a nice little halfway house into bringing them on as a full-time coach so that's the process mm. that we ended up going through in the end isn't it yeah i think we realized didn't we from the waiting list thing that it, we that was our first i suppose realization about the no like and trust and and how important that is and how everyone has um they're, they're sort of favorites and things like because even when me and you worked together we'd have different types of clients come through and even with the group coaching when we did it for the first time we had we, we had people wanting to work with us as well like so we had she she got she got clients off the back of it but we actually also got clients as well um, even though the premise was to kind of not be you know for us and not to be as full with, with us it was supposed to be that that she got most of them but it just shows that people will gravitate towards you and they will go right I want um you know I want to work with Dan I want to work with Mike whatever whatever it is um and the group coaching allows that because you can then, you can ultimately shape how much input that coach has. If you want that coach to take on all those clients pretty much as, or as many as possible, you can make sure that they're on six of the live calls and you only do two of them or you can make sure that they're interacting with everyone in there so that you accelerate that know, like and trust. That's the benefit of doing it. That's the, the real thing with, with that is that they sign up for you, for the group coaching, for the brand. They then get to know someone else throughout it who's helped them, gives them great advice, shows their personality. They start following Instagram all of a sudden it's then a logical choice for them to join rather than just, hey, here's a coach we've got in our brand, come and work with us. It may work more so in bodybuilding because you're like, well, I trust the brand results and they're trusted by that person, so I'll work with them anyway. But we also know that as well isn't always the case. There's an element of they want a personal relationship with that person who they believe to be very, very good. So you have to show off that coach in the group coaching to be very, very good. You have to show that they're great, all these things, and you have to give them that platform. Um, And that's why I think a lot of... um, I know a lot of people sort of shit on group coaching programs and they shit on the lower ticket offers and you just got to do one-to-one group coaching's crap and all this sort of stuff, maybe because they couldn't get it to work. Um, But one of the main things that is important with it is that it's not about the amount of people you get into it. It's not about the amount of upsells you give. It's about building that know, like, and trust with your other coaches within the brand that allows them to get more upsells, which means that you will then make more money off the back end of that. So... It's not about group coaching for me, and I know for, for us, it's certainly not about the upfront money you get. It's not about the, the upfront, oh, I've got 100 people on a group coaching program, oh my God, that means I've got 10 grand. Okay, great, brilliant. Doesn't mean anything. That's not really what you're doing it for. You're doing it so that on the back end of that, you might get, uh, I think we get about a 30% uptake into one-to-one after that. Is that if you've then got potentially 30 leads for people to speak to, your coaches to speak to. If you've got three coaches, that's 10 each. They're not getting 10 each organically naturally on their own and they wouldn't have done that without you so that's why the group coaching works really really well is that it provides that element of a brand that can grow and get individual coaches within it full without having that element of here's a waiting list go work with this coach i don't want to that's the problem so here's how technically you're getting paid for it if you're going to go down the the group coaching route you sell a group coaching um program which we can help you with we've got the group coaching playbook Sure. Plug. Um, plug. Message us if you want, if you're interested in that. Basically, every single step that you need to set up, run, launch, uh, convert people from upsells from it, everything, all in one easy playbook. There you go. There, there's the ad. Um, 
for example, let's just say if you manage to get 30 on your first one, which is not an unrealistic um, figure. We've run it with numerous people, and 30 seems to be a good a good first number. Obviously, you could coach all the 30 yourself, probably. Um, but if we're talking about bringing on a coach, you could literally have them coaching, in the group coaching, and they coach the 30. You might pay them. So let's just say you've, sell, you've sold it at... 100 quid let's just say for ease of math so you've taken in your three grand again it's not gonna it's not retirement money but you could essentially ask the coach to and let's just say you pay them one thousand pounds let's just say you're you're essentially taking that two thousand pounds profit off the back end of it for no real additional work that's how you've employed a coach to fulfill the coaching that needs to be fulfilled and you're now making money for an employee, if you want to term it as an employee. And not only that, if they are coaching those 30 people, like Dan says, you, you're roughly going to get about a 30% upsell if you do it right, that 10 people can then go into their own one, the, 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 your specific coaches one-to-one coaching, and because you've been involved in the lead generation, you will be entitled to, depending on how you want to set your business up, a percentage share of that, whatever that may be. Maybe we'll talk about that in, the, in, in future things if I set that up. But again, let's just say, just throw out a, a figure. Let's just say you take 50%, because again, it's easy maths, of those clients' one-to-ones, and they've had 10 sign-ups, uh, and let's just say they're charging 200 quid, for example, for the one-to-one. You're taking 100 pounds per person, and there's 10 of them, that's 1,000 pounds. Again, with you doing no work, besides having that coach under your brand, doing all the good stuff that you're doing and being on hand to help them um, progress as a coach. That's how you get paid to take on an employee. If you're not doing it within a group coaching, it's still the same thing. So we could go and employ, or say employ, bring on another coach to work with us, put put them under our brand now without a group coaching, teach them how to do their social media, how to get leads, and we will take a percentage of that through being under a brand with thousands of results, with standing in the industry, with just a bigger entity than just themselves. We could then coach them to get on 10, 15, 20 clients, and we would take a percentage split of that, and we've essentially brought in another coach into our brand that's cost us no money. We've got paid for bringing on an employee, which is a stark difference difference to every other mentorship that says, right, I need this thousand pounds for this VA, VA outlay. You're not getting paid for that. You're banking on them, closing enough calls with the right, uh, sorry, booking enough calls with the right niche that's going to stay in for a long enough time that will cover that as an expense. That's what you're banking on. You're banking on them. You need this sales team. You're banking on them being great at closing. You're banking on them identifying which ones are the ones suitable for your brand on the call. And you're banking on the people that are closing to come in and stay for the amount of time that's going to cover that expense. So everything that you're being told to have an expense with, that doesn't earn you any money back directly. It can do indirectly if you've got an amazing VA who's really niche specific, who captures your tone of voice. You're going to pay through the nose for that, by the way. Captures your tone of voice, brilliant. If you have an amazing sales team that gets fucking 90% sales success, great, cool. It's still an expense, but you might end up making money off that. But an easy way, we could literally take on 10 coaches now. Take on 10 people, change their name on Instagram, get their branding set up, show them how we coach, give them all our resources. Really, really simple. As soon as they're starting to take on clients, we're getting money. That's the business model that we have, not in, a, in any kind of sleazy way. And obviously, we only have four coaches because we want to put enough time into those coaches. We want to build those up and get those to a level where you know that we're both happy at, and so on and so forth. But that business model makes more sense. So get yourself full, and then bring on a coach to your first port of call for fulfillment. Whether that is a group coaching or whether it is nurturing somebody to bring on their own one to ones and taking that cut. That's how you build a team without ramping up your expenses. Yeah, it still makes, I still can't work out how there's so many coaches out there who aren't full, but yet trying all these things. Like you just said there, get full, but get full. it sounds so simple, but like you, so on the last video I said about how like, oh, get to this number of maybe like 10K, you know, after tax and sort of stuff that you're happy with. And then you might look at employing some people, right? I think it's actually even simpler than that. It is literally get full, get to your level, whatever you consider full to be, get to that point. Because it's different for every single person, 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever it is. And your life is how you want to look in terms of hours and stuff like that. Because once you get full and you stay full for six months, 
you can then launch something like a group program because we've seen people do it where they kind of get to a half decent number of clients go oh, I might do a group coaching program now and they never then get to that number of full clients because their leads go into group coaching they go into all this other stuff and it, it can be um, it can be quite tough then to kind of keep that keep the ball rolling with it so get full is, is definitely the advice that I would I would go with 100% is that's the the key thing before you even think about anything else group coaching taking on a coach all that sort of stuff because the reason we like that model so much is that I know other people who take on coaches and they just pay them a flat rate fee per month what happens if they lose all their clients there's no incentive for that person to keep their clients there's no incentive for that person to be good at coaching there's no inc- so we have a lot of with our coach a lot of incentives to get to a certain point if they get to a certain point in terms of numbers they get a lot of their I suppose a lot of that money back they get a lot of that client uh, amount in their pocket, um, as, as rightly as they should. Maybe we, maybe we'll just cover it on this one because we're not going to do a separate one on that, or are we? No, no. Let's cover it then. All right. So think of some that, so, yeah. <laughs> so we basically incentivize them to get full, to get more clients, to get full, and we reward that by giving them more equity back. So at the beginning, it might, for example, I'm not saying it is, but it might be fifty percent. Then at a certain number of clients, it might drop to 45. At a certain number of clients, it might drop to 40. So on and so forth. So that the amount that we're taking actually becomes less and less as a percentage and they get more of it. That's an incentive to get full. It it breeds the the entrepreneurship within something, within within a brand. Entrepreneurship, I think they call it. And then at a certain st- stage, I think we've predetermined full has been about 40 clients. At 40 clients, if they stay at 40 clients for over three months in a row, we give them a bonus. Um, it's again just to incentivize, incentivize good results, good client retention, good lead generation within your company and your brand because it's the best thing for your brand and it's also the best thing for the coach. It's, we're not here to bleed anybody dry and take and take all of their profits. Like again, like you just said, you might pay somebody a flat rate of two thousand pounds, but the coach is bringing in eight thousand pounds. That's going to be a, a very disgruntled coach at some stage. We would rather just go, okay, here's how to do it, here's how to progress, and then. Because of that, you're a valuable asset to the team, so we'll give you more equity back, more stake back. Still works well for us as a, as a company because it's still, obviously, as they earn more, we can accept a smaller percentage, but it, the the actual total amount of cost actually will increase. Mm-hmm. And and it's, it goes against what other people have said to do as well. Other people have just said to us, like, just do it 50% flat, or they've said just, again, pay them salary and that sort of stuff. So there's other ways that you can do it. But again, it has to be right for your business and what you want to do and how you want to do it. But these are the ways that, in our opinion, you should be growing and you should be looking to grow. Because the other thing that we've not even touched on is that you can actually get people within your business to help you with aspects that maybe you aren't as good at. So we talk about this a lot. Me and Mike are different in terms of our skill set already in, in what we do. So we have different roles and we have different things. Well, if you bring coaches on and they have other skill sets, you can pay them a little bit of money to do these jobs. So rather than paying a VA £1,000 a month, you could pay your coach 400 And you're still giving them more money. They're invested. They know exactly what you want out of it. And you're going to do that that job effectively. You're going to teach them how to do it, how you would do it within your brand. And you know that because you trust them, they're going to do it the right way. So there's other benefits of having coaches on board to, to help with those sorts of things who, who have that skill set. So um, that's the only thing I would say as well is that you you know use your brain with that and think about, think about creating a business whereby someone else can grow within it, not just be bled dry, not just used and replaced if they were shit. Invest some time into them, invest some effort into it. And you might just find that in the long run, you have a better business that has less turnover, as, as in like of staff. Um, <laughs> don't want less turnover, do you? You want more, if anything. Um, but like Mike said, is that the expenses then increase at the same rate at which the income does, which is kind of what you want. Yeah. We'll leave it there. That's it. All good. Share it and stuff. Like us, follow us. Uh, I'm just about to eat something salty. Yeah. Uh, salty nuts I need. Yeah. Look at that. Don't say the brand name. We should be getting paid millions for if we mention that because we do get about 200 viewers, I think. Yeah, 200, 200 views of Bebos. Yeah, so be good. what? Oh, oh, there you go, Bebos. You can have that for free. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's do a Stephen Bartlett. Oh, we should have invested them now. You've probably seen me eating these Bear Bells <laughs> and I love them because they're nutritionally complete. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> anyway, hope you're good and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. See you later.